I always have revelations when I'm like not showered. So our traditional understanding of light might be incomplete, which I've known. I don't have a PhD, so no one listens to me. Standard thought that it might be both a wave and a particle is unfinished. So this theory that I'm about to introduce from a professor, Celso J. Villas Boas at the Federal University of San Carlos, I can't pronounce, sorry. He is introducing the concept of dark photons, hypothetical particles that could coexist with regular photons of light, but they interact very weakly with ordinary matter, making them difficult to detect. The core idea is that these dark photons are something that can explain unexplained phenomena currently in physics. It could provide insights into dark matter, something that exerts gravitational effects, but is not visible right now in science. And the age old double slit experiment that proved that light was a wave and a particle. This theory says that light is more than a wave particle duality. If dark photons exist, they could be a new aspect of light that has been overlooked, leading to a huge shift in our fundamental understanding of physics. The reason this is so cool is because intuitively I've came up with the fact that there's anti-photons and this is in my book, the link is in the bio, the book's coming out soon. That just like photons come out of electrons, which creates fluorescent light, uh, this happens in plasmas, but there's anti-photons on the other side of this where we can access backwards time and intuition. It's all part of the same electron. This guy says the same thing in a different language. So this professor states that classical interference patterns arise from entangled superpositions of photon number states, what he terms a bright and a dark state. Bright states interact with matter and they're detectable, like our visible reality. Dark states, despite containing photons, do not interact with certain detectors and don't remain, uh, thus remaining unobserved. This, what he calls a dark photon, I would just call an anti-photon. And whoever's watching this, this is my first time revealing this. This is gonna be in my book. This is kind of how my mind came up with this without any training. I mean, obviously I know a lot about science and math and biology and physics and plasma, which is what I'm writing about, the fourth state of matter, which is the field where all of this, I believe, happens because plasma is an ionized gas, which has free electrons. And in those electrons, um, photons can pop out of them when they're excited. That's what creates neon lights, uh, the fluorescent aurora borealis. I basically intuitively had a feeling that there is some type of fourth dimensional inversion, whatever, dark photon, you can call it whatever you want, dark matter. I call it like a fourth dimensional plasma where these anti-photons exist. And the electron is almost like a wormhole, which I kind of got that idea. I think it was Einstein. There was some type of wormhole theory with Einstein, a, a bridge. Ah, oh, shit. Let me look it up. Yes, an Einstein-Rosen bridge, uh, which was a theoretical concept describing a tunnel through space-time connecting two different points of space-time. This is just like what this guy, guy's saying with the superposition and the dark and the light. I'm basically saying the electron is basically at the pinch point of a wormhole. It's literally the as above, so below thing. It's just a macro and microcosm of all the same kind of things that happen all in nature that I have really good quantitative reasoning and I see these patterns for some reason. That is what I do with my life. And the electron is at the pinch point and the anti-photons are on this side the or dark photons, whatever. The photons are on this side, visible matter, our 3D reality. So I kind of made it in a grid where the top uh, is our 3D reality, the bottom two are our 4D inverted reality, and then the center is what you can call 5D or just presence. It's the access point to everything. I write about this in my book. There, then you go into psychology, philosophy, meditation, and how to access all these, you know, your intuition in the fourth dimension where time, I could call it backwards time, but it's really just where time is not linear. And this is how you plug in to those things. So I'm basically fusing physics, psychology, biology, metaphysics, and everything. Because that's just how my mind works. So this not may not make sense. But finally, back to anti-photons. When uh, the electron in a plasma is free, I believe when things are in a plasma state, they open up this, you know, fourth dimensional, whatever, electron wormhole where the photon becomes the anti-photon. It chills around here and then it comes back and gives information back to our three-dimensional photon visible light reality. But the way I see light, and I don't want to talk about it. No, I'll just talk about it, but I talk about it in my book too. Okay, so this will all connect. Stay with me. The way I see light is different than what modern science says. Light in science is defined as electromagnetic radiation. 
is photons that travel in waves. It carries energy, but no mass, transmits information. When it hits your retina, your brain decodes it into sight, but that is only one layer of light's identity. And I believe this is also what this scientist is intimating or physicist or optics or whatever he's in. And I'm so excited that people are saying it too, or something like it, whatever. They're opening people's minds that science is not set in stone, never is, never was. In my framework, light is not just physical. Light is a signal that consciousness has touched information through the medium of plasma. I believe that plasma, the fourth state of matter, is the fabric of our reality. It is not proven yet in science, but I believe it will be. It is like a finer plasma than our science can study, like a living ether. And in that medium, in that interstitial cosmic fascia medium, it is the vehicle for consciousness. It is the holder of consciousness. It holds information. You can even think of space-time geometry as being this field of information that is held by plasma and it is the product of the collective unconscious and conscious because it's waking up like a sleeping giant. Sorry, I have to stick to the point. Light is what happens in 3D when awareness tunes into a frequency of potential and that potential is simply made visible. It makes sense. That is eventually how we'll time travel or bring in other timelines because we'll be able to see different potentials with light. So light is simply the evidence of plasma consciousness synergizing synergy. Plasma is the intelligent field. Consciousness is the directional force. And our awareness is that tuning presence. And light is the moment these all harmonize, which is just a visible echo of creation and just a three-dimensional visible representation. So light's not the source of consciousness. It is a trace because light is just light in 3D. In 4D, it's anti-photon or dark photon. In 5D, you're in this spiritual space where multidimensional selves are, God is whatever. Light is not light either. It's more like a shimmering mist. People who've meditated have probably experienced this kind of like fractal, misty, uh, almost like a vivid neon light, like fluorescent colors. It's not the same as visible light. It almost makes sense when people see the light when they're dying. It's because they're in that fourth dimensional non-light space. And then they're seeing like the brightest light ever that you can't even comprehend. It all makes sense. It all connects, okay? So in 4D, in this space of antiphotons, consciousness moves through memory, through archetype, through motion, not light. This is what science might one day call antiphotons or backwards time or backwards light. Or what this kind gentleman is calling dark photons. And then if in this fifth dimensional space, in this space of presence in our multidimensional selves, which we're all evolving to, consciousness, instead of flowing through light, flows through resonating, through feeling, through intuition. The opalescent light, only visible when you're no longer looking with your eyes, but you're looking with your whole self. This is why they see the light, as I said, in near-death experiences and meditation, visionary states, is a higher dimensional light, shimmering ether. We call ourselves light beings, not because we are light, but it's an echo of a deeper truth that we are plasma beings. And when plasma and consciousness unite in us beautiful human selves, light is like the wake we leave behind. Very cool. It is literally what Jason Paget, uh, the acquired savant, says about light. It is like a visible imprint on this reality. It is the visible echo or memory of the world, but it is not the only true reality, but it is indeed a reality and it is very real. All these worlds are merging right now, which is why this is a very crazy time an age of Aquarius. It is like every field of study is merging together too, as we are. It's just a weird, awesome time. Now quickly back to this, which is how I'm piggybacking off of all this and roped you into this metaphysical conversation, which I think will be proven. His concept, his concept of dark states, photon configurations that are undetectable, by conventional means, they parallel the idea of antiphotons being elusive due to their unique temporal properties. Also, the notion that these dark states can influence interference patterns without direct, detec- direct detection resonates with interpretations of photons exhibiting retrocausal behavior. Their future measurements affect past events. This all connects with backwards time, with nonlinear time. It's not really backwards time, it's just like a pool of no time and all time holographic basically we're moving from duality to a holographic paradigm where the whole is in the part it's not about wave or particles we're seen beyond the veil into the pool of the fourth dimension beyond light and time into plasma lincoln bio 